Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good today. Just uh, wanted to start out uh, uh, this particular video. It's gonna be sort of like the foundation moving forward for a lot of different information that I'm gonna start bringing forward on jerkbait fishing. And not only that I'm gonna start talking about this quite a bit, um, but we're gonna start doing a lot of stuff on it with a, with a Fish the Moment, Johnny, Johnny Schultz and myself with with the Fish the Moment website. We're gonna start uh, hosting some uh, webinars on jerkbait fishing this fall. Um, we're probably gonna do quite a, quite a bit uh, of filming, you know, do our YouTube videos on the jerkbait fishing. So we're gonna have a lot of uh, stuff coming out on it. And I, I think a lot of y'all that have followed me for very long, you know that I've been doing the instructional jerkbait fishing trips for several years now. And uh, they've been super, super popular because um, one of the reasons that they're so popular and one of the reasons we're going to start doing all this stuff with fish the moment is jerkbait fishing is the most difficult technique there is to master out there absolutely in my opinion by far um, simply because it's a bait that's it's not real user friendly there's a ton of variables around it and you have to generate the strikes from the the activity and the manipulation you put on the bait um, a lot of other baits, you can just throw them out there and work them back and they, they get bit, but not so with a jerk bait. So what we're going to sort of do move, moving forward on, on Fish the Moment and myself, you know, just sort of break down a lot of this and, you know, sort of give a lot of the finer points of it. A um, little bit of history in this. Um, jerk bait fishing sort of originated right here where I grew up at. Southwest Missouri, Tabor Rock Lake, Gold Shoals Lake, Lake of the Ozarks. Um, I was a member of the bass, the Big Mo Bass Club in Joplin, Missouri back in the 70s when I was in high school. And we had a bunch of old old experts in that club that fished Table Rock a lot. And we fished a lot of our tournaments, our club tournaments at Table Rock back in the mid 70s. And, you know, we had a lot of really good fishermen in it. Uh, a lot of people know James Watson, his dad, Bill Watson was in our club. Rick Holman, his team partner was there. A lot of these guys, like the Watts, Watson and Holdman, that were that were expert jerkbait fishermen before anyone knew about it, I got a chance to talk to these guys and learn about the technique. And back then, it there was a lot different. Back when I first started with jerkbaits, it was the only jerkbaits that were out there were just the, was the Spoonbill Rebel around here. And there were some guys in Texas fishing it a little bit over the over the grass down there, but that's not that's not what I consider the traditional jerkbait fishing. I'm, when I talk about jerkbait fishing, I'm talking about, I'm, you can catch them 12 months out of the year on it, but specifically what we're gonna gear forward in these, in a lot of these videos we're gonna do moving forward this fall is suspended bass jerkbait fishing. Clear water, not, well, clean water, and bass that suspend in cold water. And back when I was in the club, the Big Mo Bass Club, the only thing that we had back then were the Spoonbill Rebels. And we'd take them down to Tabor Rock. And back then at Tabor Rock, there was a lot of like uh, old cedar trees and a lot of timber still left in the lake. And we'd take, the, you know, these Spoonbill Rebels down there. We'd put lead solder around the hooks and you'd suspend them next, next to this timber in the pre-spawn. And you just can't believe how many big bass we caught. There was a period back in the late 70s and the early 80s down at Tabor Rock that if you went down there and did not catch a seven or eight pound bass, it was it was an exception to the rule. Almost every single time you went down there in that late February to late March period, um, you'd catch a big one. And and now seven or eight pounders are basically unheard of at Tabor Rock. Very rare to catch a seven or eight. You know, there's, you hear four to six pounders, but very seldom seven or eight pounders. But we caught tons of them down there. You know, lots of big ones. I We had one day I was down there uh, fishing the Spoonbow Rebel, and I lost the biggest bass that I'd ever seen on Tabor Rock. Well, we just, we, let me preface that, we just caught an 812, put it in the boat, just caught an 87, put it in the boat, and then the next fish was that one that was bigger than the 812 that I lost. Hooks were fouled on it and it came off. So there were days that we caught multiple seven and eight pounders on it. And so, like I said, jumping forward for that, uh, there was an evolution in that it went from this, it sort of went like this. It went from the Spoonbow Rebel, it went to the Deep Diving Rogues, it went to the Medium Diving Rogues, 
and like the long a bombers that type of stuff and this was this was basically what stayed up until the the uh, late 1990s to when the japanese manufacturers like mega bass uh, started coming out with the baits and you know i started working with mega bass designing jerk baits in the late 1990s and a lot of the stuff that you see now uh, in jerkbait fishing was a result of, 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 you know, working with these Japanese companies on basically what I knew about jerkbait fishing over the past. And and now, like it's, it's a staple for so many different anglers. But sort of what my philosophy on fishing jerkbaits are is I've got a foundation that I sort of teach. And that foundation is a combination of a lot of different things. The first thing that you have to remember on jerkbait fishing is that you have to hit everything together in order to maximize the day you can have on that. And you, what I mean by that is you have to have the right color, you have to have the right cadence, you have to have the right speed of retrieve on the bait, you have to have the right bait profile, you have to get it in the right water column. Um, and all this, a lot of it has to do with, with hooks and how the bait's weighted and your line size and that type of stuff. So more, the more of those variables that you can get to line up perfectly, that's when you can have those awesome days on the water with a jerk bait is when you line up all those variables. And one of the things that we're gonna teach a lot in this, in this webinar is basically sort of what you need to, to look at in, to, to, in order to get closer to that. And, you know, just briefly, you know, and like I said, I sort of wanna set a foundation for this. When, you, when, you're, when you go out, and here I'm talking specifically about the cold water jerkbait fishing, cold water, clean water jerkbait fishing. Um, the first thing that you have to really decide when you get out on the water, in my opinion, is you have to analyze the water clarity because the water clarity tells you so much about uh, the water clarity and temperature. That's sort of combined with that, but okay. So the water clarity and temperature will tell you so much about um, color and it will tell you so much about cadence and speed and which are really critical elements um, you know in, in determining how you need to start and once you determine what the water temperature temperatures are and the color of or, or the water temperatures are and the uh, uh the clarity of the water what that does that allows me to choose my initial color that i go for and to me color is is probably right up there with one and two with the most important aspect of a jerk bait because a jerk bait is a sight oriented bait. I mean, you can catch fish in stained water with it, and I have, but primarily a jerk bait is the sight oriented fit bait. And I've never seen another bait in all of my years fishing that is so color sensitive that can make a huge difference. I mean, I'm talking about different shades, whether they're metallic sides or clear sides or flat finish sides, the color of the belly with it. There's a lot of stuff that, that, that will, you know, be responsible for triggering that strike or not. And on second to that is, like I said, if you're not using the right cadence for the day, um, you you can't maximize on that bite either. And most people make the big mistake in jerkbait fishing is they do a, like a jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause. That's that's just all they do. And that's it's no different than like fishing a crankbait or a spinnerbait. That works under some conditions, but some conditions there's a lot more variables. There's length, it's the length of your pause. It's, it's, it's how much line you pull on, on the jerk. It's, it's, it's how hard the jerks are. And a lot of that has to do with the, the rod action you have. The tip, the tip of your rod has a lot to do with it. So like I said, we're gonna cover that, those aspects at a later point, but my, my, my key point here for the foundation is pay attention to your cadence, pay attention to your colors until you hit upon the right one. And one of the biggest questions I get in jerkbait fishing is, uh, you know, what color do I need to use? And I can tell you right now, there is no rule of thumb on what is going to be the best color. Now, there's some guidelines to give you a starting point because you have to, when you go out on the lake for the first time, you have to start with something. And, in, you know, for example, just a, a real quick tip on this is my the general rule of thumb I, I go by is if, if the water visibility is say, uh, you know, greater than three feet, which you know, I consider clean, and you have, you know, a, a cloudy day, I like the flat, the flat finishes, like the matte finishes. 
And if you have a particular day where like it's bright and sunny and windy, water clarity is in that two to four or five foot range. Um, I like the metallic uh, sided baits, particularly, you know, the more wind you have. And then if you have situations where you have that good jerkbait colored water, that two to four foot visibility, and it's sunny or partly cloudy with not much wind, is I'll use a translucent side on the, and of course there's variations to that based upon water clarities and wind speed, time of day, because what happens is the, the amount of light penetration during the course of a day changes because the light penetration when you get out there at eight o'clock in the morning is a lot different than when you're fishing at one o'clock in the afternoon. So th that may require a color change, uh, you know, as the day goes on. And this is something that you sort of pick up with experience and time on the water. And as well as the color change that changes during the day, sometimes your speed or retrieve changes too. I mean, sometimes it requires a faster pace, sometimes a little bit slower pace. You know, you have to really experiment until you hit on that right combination. And I always, when I teach these instructional trips, I, I always stress to the people that I'm taking out that you need to pay attention to hit on as many of those combinations as you can. Um, because you can catch fish even doing, you can catch fish on not the best color with not the best retrieve. But what, what you're trying to do is you're trying to maximize the, the strike getting potential of the bait that you're fishing. And that comes with a lot of different variables. <coughs> so back to color again is what I'm, when, when you, when you, when you talk about, you know, those are my general rules. Another thing that goes along with that is, and I, I tell this to a lot of my clients too, is that when that bait is in the water, put your bait in the water and just, and just swim it alongside the, you know, six or eight inches underneath the water. What you need to pay attention to is the color that you choose for that particular day. You want that bait to blend in a little bit that you want it to subtly stand out. And you'll know what I'm talking about. The more that you fish, you'll know what I'm talking about. You don't want that bait to become invisible in the water as far as the color versus the water clarity. And you don't want it to, to, to overpower the water clarity that you're in being too bright or even if the back's a little bit too bright. So you want to choose those water, those clear, those uh, colors that sort of blend in uh, where there's a subtle blend either way. And I can show you that. I mean, if you're somebody's in the boat with me, I can show you what I mean by putting different colors in, but you'll understand what I'm talking about, um, you know, once you start paying closer, closer attention to that. And another big problem, you know, I see guys or people have that when they're jerkbait fishing is that they don't keep the bait you know, in the sweet spot long enough. And you know, the sweet spot in jerkbait fishing is super critical as far as catching big fish. You can catch fish like as the bait goes down or as it comes up, but 75, 80%, probably, well, maybe more than that, but over 80% of the big bass you catch on a jerkbait is when that bass, and that was, is when that bait is at its absolute deepest point on the retrieve. And most of the time, this is only for like a 10 foot period that it's down the deep like that. So in order to maximize that time in the strike zone, it's really key to be able to make a super long cast with your jerk bait. Cause the longer cast you have, the longer you can keep that bait in the sweet spot. And I've got a few tricks with that. You know, like I said, most people know I use a spinning rod all the time for a jerk bait. Very few exceptions that I don't is if I'm fishing like around dirtier water with with like cover like logs or stumps or super shallow grass then i then i may use a bait caster but other than that i'm using a spinning rod all all the time and we'll go into that more detail later videos but um it's sort of that combination of of like i said getting that bait down in the strike zone with the right cadence uh you know with the right color so anyway that's just a few things i wanted to talk about today that's sort of just skimming the surface on it um, but like I said, stay tuned. Um, we're going to be doing those webinars with Fish the Moment. We're going to be doing a lot of jerkbait uh, videos with Fish the Moment uh, this fall and this winter. Um, I'm, we're going to be, I'm offering instructional fishing courses through Fish the Moment on jerkbait fishing coming up this, this fall and winter. So there's a lot of opportunities out there if you really want to uh, take your jerkbait fishing to the next level. And uh, like I said, I've, 
these, these are secrets that I, it's taken me, you know, close to 50 years to learn. And I don't mind sharing them. I mean, it's like, it's like, I, I don't mind sharing what I've learned with people because it all goes back to again is you, is you have to know when to throw it and when to put it down, like with any other technique. And there's no secrets in fishing anymore. Uh, you know, for people to try to hide stuff, it's, uh, it, it really doesn't make any sense. I tried to do it myself for years. A lot, a lot of times I'd get keyed in on a certain bait or technique and I try to keep it for myself. But um, anymore, I've sort of, as I've gotten older, I've sort of got to the point where I, I, I know that, like I said, that those aren't, that isn't, that can give you confidence, but that's not the thing that's gonna make you a better angler. And you also, you get to a point like, like I'm at <clears throat> in my fishing where <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm, you know, getting, you know, I'm definitely a veteran in the sport and you get to a point where you sort of want to start get to give something back and you just sort of want to pass down that information to the next generation. So that's sort of the, what I'm doing right now is I'm sort of passing this information on down, you know, so, so people can enjoy it and take advantage of some of the stuff that I've learned over all these years. And cause it's, it's just such a blast to do. But anyway, that's today's video. We're going to be back with a lot more on the jerkbait fishing. My, it's, that and flipping is my favorite way to fish. i got a lot to share with everybody about it. And um, like I said, stay tuned. There will be a lot more. And appreciate you guys following the channel. Thanks for subscribing. And um, we'll see you all later. See you.